Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, pleased to have you join my partner, John Coleman, and uh, our, our famous brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell. How are you doing, Steve? I'm good. I'm good. This has been, this, I'm just enjoying this so much. This is fun. This is so much oh, fun. Oh, the pleasure is all ours, believe me. Yeah. Stephen, uh, this is part three of a series of four foundational, I hate to call them lectures, but uh, lectures yeah. about a better word. Yeah. how your brain works and how we can change it uh, to, to bring ourselves a little bit more happiness mm -hmm. and other things. And in the last session, uh, you talked about our, our, our self-images being hardwired. Um, and I guess the question, and you were, you were teasing us with the idea that we can change them. Okay. So tell it's us how really about It's really hard, though. I mean, it's really hard. And people, people go to these huge seminars just to, it's really hard. So why don't try to change them? So we're going to talk today about what you can just do, what you can do instead and what you can do instead works. So Good. hang Good. on to your seats. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Me too. Let's remember this, the foundation for everything, that the brain believes what we tell it. Now, here's what the sad part is. The sad part is that most of what we say to ourselves is negative stuff. And when that was posted in What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Chad Helmstetter back in 1986, there's a lot of disagreement, but as we... Um, study the brain we're realizing that yes most of what we say to ourselves most of our self-talk is negative however huge however here we go we can replace notice i didn't say change we can replace the negative with positive messages okay and your brain believes those messages just to believe the old messages. Okay. Now, when we choose, and now it is a choice, that's why all this is called cognitive psychology. We choose when we choose to keep replacing those negative messages, our brain rewires itself. Remember neuroplasticity. Okay. And those positive messages replace the negative, and they, over time, become a mindset. And then over time, because the brain is still rewiring itself, that mindset becomes who we are. Wow. Now. We also need to remember this. Our brain misses things. Let me illustrate. We have two daughters. Abby is our first daughter. She was born two surprises. She was born on my birthday. That's exciting. She was born three weeks late. And Mary woke up and gave me a waffle iron for my birthday. And that night she gave me Abby. Wow. What a birthday <laughs> present. She also has red hair. Red hair. Both of our daughters have flaming red hair, which was really surprising because neither of us have red hair, but she did. Okay. So we brought Abby home. I was working in hospitals at the time. Mary called me at work and she was absolutely sobbing. Her mother, her mother had come out from Michigan to see her first daughter-in-law. So her mother was with us. Mary was sobbing. In fact, she was sobbing so hard. I could not understand what she was sobbing. So I just went home. Walked into our living room. There was Mary's mother sitting next to Mary. Mary is still sobbing. And Mary's mother is kind of teary-eyed. And I sat down opposite. I said, what in the world did you say? And Mary's mother looked up at us. And she says, Steve, Abby's eyes are crossed. What? They're crossed. <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they are not. Back and forth, back and forth. We went to a doctor eventually to show how wrong Mary's mother was. The doctor took one look and she said, yes, 
They're both crossed severely. Amblyopia in one, strabismus in the other. So she had to have surgery at the age of 18 months to tighten out the muscles. And then she had to be patched for the next five years. When you try to patch a two-year-old, it's quite a challenge. Abby was patched for five. And now she looks beautiful. Now, I am really smart. Mary's smarter than I am. She runs circles around me. We both have got her upper, she's got a master's in education, I have a master's in computers. So we have the intelligence. Why could we not see Abby's crossed eyes? Because Abby was our perfect child. She could never have crossed eyes. How could that be? It had nothing to do with intelligence, had nothing to do with how we were raised or our relationship. It's what our brain does. It blinds us to things that are right there. And we think we see everything, and we really don't. And that is the reason why a lot of our self-talk is mistaken, especially when we talk about ourselves. Now, if I left you with this, it'd be really depressing, but now comes the good news. So hang on to your seat. I'll hang on to mine. Here we go. Let's go to the work of Dr. Eric Kandel, who wrote um, In Search of Memory. And what he discovered, in fact, he got a Nobel Prize for that. He discovered is that our self-images, number one, cannot be removed. You can't get rid of them. Number two, they are really, 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 really hard to change. That's why people can be so frustrated. But if you can't get rid of them, they're really hard to change, but you can replace them. Lock on to that like the rock on the road that I talked about when my dad was teaching me how to ride a bicycle. So let me give you a story that illustrates all of this. My father died when he was very young. He was 62. And Mary and I walked away from the memorial service, and my father was very, very overweight. And Mary looked at me, and she said, if you die early, I'm going to kill you. Because <laughs> I don't want to be a widow for 40 years like your mom's going to be, and she was. And I was about 40 pounds more than I weigh now. So I said, okay, right, I need to lose this weight. So I got up, ran, swim. I'd lose maybe two or three pounds in a week. Get it all back on the weekend. I did that for 25 years. Why could I not lose the weight? Not because I wasn't trying really hard. It's because what I was saying to myself. I would give myself a pep talk. I would go to my mirror, and I would say, you are... A 240-pound man who's got to lose 40 pounds. When I said I'm a 240-pound man, what did my brain say? Oh, okay. But then it said, my job is to keep you at 240 pounds. Because that's what you're saying about yourself. And it did for 25 years. And then I began studying all this stuff and I realized, oh my goodness, I'm giving myself the wrong message. So that's where an affirmation came in. Now, an affirmation isn't new age weird stuff. All it is is a statement that when you write it correctly, triggers a picture in your mind of a goal as if it has already been accomplished. So to understand that, let's go back to the story. So after 25 years, I said, this isn't working. So I began studying this stuff, and I decided to write an affirmation. And the affirmation was something like, oh, I look so great. 
at 200 pounds because of the way I eat and exercise and I look fantastic. Now, when I first locked on this, my brain had a fit. It said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at the mirror. Look at the scale. You don't weigh 200 pounds, you weigh 240. And that's when I had to say, no, brain, I'm the boss. And I weigh 200 pounds. And I look great. And every single time I sit down for a meal, I picture a 200-pound person. And I eat like a 200-pound person. Here's what happened. Over time, my brain began saying, okay, more and more and more. Till that mindset of 200 pounds became a part of me. And over a year, I lost the weight. Now, this is really important to understand. There is still a self-image of a 240-pound person in my brain. How do I know? As I said earlier, I've never had a lobotomy. So it's still there. And I could eat like a 240-pound person any time I wanted to. But like Art with his smoking, I choose not to. And my brain says, okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. Let me give you another illustration that, that, that helps you understand this more. One of my dear friends is named Lynn Ravazzini, and she is an RN, and she's been listening to my presentations for many years. And one day she told me a story. This is years ago. And she said, Steve, let me tell you the story that illustrates everything that you're saying. This is Lynn talking now. I have always had problems with my nails. Okay. I would bite the nails. They would look horrible. Um, I'd bite them more. They would look horrible. I'd put band-aids around them to start biting, and none of it worked. And it was just horrible. And I looked at the nails. Oh, they're just horrible. And I would bite them more. And it was just, just this horrible circle. One day I was walking on 4th Street on Santa Rosa. And they just opened the first nail shop. So I went in there, and for 20 bucks, they gave me 10 beautiful nails. Now, do you think I'm going to bite those nails? Of course not. Because they look so wonderful. They look so great. Why would I want to bite them? But here is what happened. Over time, she didn't need the new nails because her old ones had become beautiful. That gives me the chills. That is so exciting. I taught this many years at the Drug Abuse Alternative Center for the County of Sonoma in the residential program. I would go on in a Thursday night and teach these classes to about 80 addicts. I'll never forget Rick. Rick came to me after one of my classes. He was really angry. Now, let me describe to you what Rick looked like. Rick probably was six foot four. Nothing but muscle. Tattoos, jewelry, a scary looking dude. He came up to me after the, one of my first classes and he was really angry. And I won't tell you the language, the, the language that he used because you'd have to shut me off. But he said in his own amazing language, I hate what you're saying. I hate this. All of this is baloney. Of course, he didn't use the word baloney, but okay. He said, none of this works. I've been to Quentin. I've been to Folsom. I've been through all the programs. It won't work because I'm dyslexic. And I've tried it. And it won't work for me. And I showed him a slide. And on the slide were simple names. Tom Cruise, Whoopi Goldberg, Jay Leno, Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci. All of these people were dyslexic. Including Leonardo, which I thought was really interesting. 
And I looked up at, at Rick and I said, Rick, every single one of these people have had the same challenge that you have. But maybe at one point in their lives, they said, wait a minute. I have something special. And it will take longer. And it will be harder. And it will be more challenging for me. But I can do this. And then I looked up at Rick and I very quietly said, Rick, the reason this program won't work is because that's what you're saying. And your brain's agreeing. And I'll never forget it. And I'll... I saw tears in his eyes. And he said, you mean it's really up to me? And I said, yes, Rick. It's up to you. I saw him two months later at our little Safeway shop in Roner Park. I'd be getting out of the car and he saw me and ran right to me. Now you gotta realize this guy was probably 240 pounds, six foot four. And I said to myself, oh, oh my God, he's found me. He's gonna kill me. And he picked me up, put me down and he was shaking. He was so excited. I said, Rick, how are you doing? He said, oh, Mr. Campbell, I didn't tell you this because I was too angry at you, but I love numbers. I can't read, but I love Excel. I love columns and rows and putting everything. So I was hired by Safeway for the midnight shift to deal with their fruits and vegetables. I noticed they were throwing all these vegetables out, which really bothered me. So I wrote a program on Excel that really brought that down. They love it so much, they're going to use it for all the other stores. Wow. So where do we go from here? Your self-images will always be a part of you. You cannot get rid of them. They're very, 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 very hard to change. But you can replace what you're saying to yourself about yourself. And your brain says, okay, is it true? Don't even care. Let me share with you one last story of one of my heroes. He dropped out of high school and he moved to Hollywood, went $30,000 into debt, sold his furniture to live, and he became Michael Fox, who now has Parkinson's. In the April 2009 issue of Time magazine, he was asked by a reporter, have you ever felt cheated by Parkinson's? Here's his answer. Absolutely not. It's been a detour I wouldn't have planned, but it has led me to amazing places. It is out of my shaky hands. I can't control it. So why would I waste one second of my life worrying about it and he's still working it all starts with what you say to yourself about yourself now have you noticed something we've been talking about how you think we've been talking about replacing your self images replacing what you're saying to yourself Steve what about your feelings? What do I do with those? Because we're not thinking people who feel. We're feeling people who think. So we're going to talk about that next time. See you then. You're such a tease. <laughs> I know. I know. Stephen, it's so much good information. So, um, oh, all right. John, so many important so nice. things that you've, you're teaching us. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a thrill. It's, I feel blessed every day. Yeah. So, just to recap in my mind, just a little bit, our self-talk 
what we say to ourselves, creates our self-images. If we do this over time, we can replace the negative self-images with the self-images we want. Yes. And our brain says, okay. Okay. And we do it. Yeah. And the brain rewires we become, itself. We That's become all what we're thinking. We don't have to ask the brain to do it any more than we have to ask the heart to pump blood. It's just a natural thing. The issue then is over time. Mm -hmm. Over time is an important part of this. Of course. You can't just say it once and expect it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's where you're going next time, isn't it? Actually, uh, I'm going into feelings next time, but let me talk about time right now. Usually the, the period comes up 21 days. Where did that come from? Let me share with you with where that came from. There's a gentleman by the name of Maxwell Maltz, and he was trained as a plastic surgeon for facial reconstruction, female facial reconstruction. He was incredible. He noticed something in his practice. He noticed that when women would come in, have the surgery, their faces were repaired, many of them would look in the mirror and they would say, see, I told you it wouldn't work even though it did. And this happened over and over and over and over again. What he discovered is that their self images had to also be replaced. The self images is I'm scarred, I'm burned, I'm ugly. And so when he did the corrections and they were there, they couldn't see it. They needed time. What he discovered is usually around 21 days before these women began to see a real difference. Other studies have shown sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes shorter for art. And it only took him one day when he said, I am a non-smoker. For me, it took 25 years of losing that weight until I finally realized I need to change what I'm saying to myself about myself. Okay. Here's what's really important though. Even though it takes time, your brain's continually rewiring itself. It's doing its job. And it'll become a part of you as you lock onto it. It's like that rock in the road. It's what you lock onto. We don't grow like this. We grow like this. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It's the people that lock on to what they want, that see the replacement. And that's exciting. Wow. It is exciting. It is exciting. I'm looking forward to the next session. Thank you. I think the next session is the best one of all, actually. Hard Thank to believe. You. I know. Thank you, Steve. The I'm looking, looking forward to it. Thank you. To take Stephen Campbell's self-paced in-depth course, Go to his website, stephenrcampbell.teachable.com. That's stephenrcampbell.teachable.com. And email Steve directly at stephenc at sbcglobal.net for a discount code to save you over $200. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. To take Stephen Campbell's self-paced in-depth course, go to his website, stephenrcampbell.teachable.com. 
That's stephenrcampbell.teachable.com. And email Steve directly at stephenc at sbcglobal.net for a discount code to save you over $200.